Hey guys, Stephanie Lee here. I'm excited to get going on this art project. So come in the studio and we'll see what kind of materials we have to work with. All right, so here are the supplies that Donna sent me. And you know, to be honest, when I first opened them, I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do that isn't gonna be what would be expected to be done with these products? And I've had, um, you know, I've had some fun trying to figure some ideas out and I think it's gonna turn out great. So what I have here is I have a Stencil Girl stencil. It's a Pam Carriker one. It's kind of a cool, like a window or doorway with hearts and branches. I've got a rubber stamp here, some cool rusty wire, and then a Liquitex paint marker. These are, these are the materials that I have to work with and I, um, I hope that my ideas work out. We'll see. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut up the stamp. Um, so I have all these supplies and I know I'm supposed to use them, but I, I'm going to kind of use them up a little bit differently. So I actually want to get a couple of the words out here and rearrange them a little bit. And I'm going to end up with do life. So, which is what we're all doing. We're all like doing life. So I'm cutting this really cool stamp up, which was hard to decide to do, but you know what? These are the sacrifices you make to get what you want when you're making art. So there's the word life. So I'm going to set this stamp and paper and stuff aside and pull out the rest of the materials that I'm going to use. Okay, so you can see clearly that I have deviated away from rubber stamps and inks, and now I've got my metal smithing stuff out. I really felt like I probably shouldn't pull out metal smithing because it's very different than just kind of your typical mixed media, but that's what kept telling me that I was supposed to do. That's what all the stuff kept telling me, you know, as if art supplies talk to you. So I have a piece of brass that I've cut out um, about the size to accommodate, or not about, but the size to accommodate that do life stamp combo that I created and I filed it and sanded it and I am not going to take up a bunch of time in this video talking to you all about metal and soldering and whatnot but I am definitely going to include a link where you can watch a video that I've created for a separate course that talks about uh, flooding on solder that'll give you all of the know-how that you need to do this if you decide you want to do it this way if you don't want to get into this aspect of it you could just rubber stamp with the ink on metal with an ink that will stay on metal. So there are alternatives. You don't have to do it this way, but this is what I want to do. So first thing I'm going to do is flux my brass because flux is what allows the solder to bond with it. I've got my solder here, my favorite solder. I've got a torch, a butane micro torch, and I'm going to heat up the brass and flood it or coat it with solder. And then I'm gonna do something really cool with the stamp. Okay, here we go. So I'm warming this up. It's gonna take a minute. Okay, so I have this liquid solder. And while it's liquid, I'm gonna actually stick my stamp in it. Let's see if I get it lined up right. Okay, ready, go. Hopefully it'll cool down before I move it. Ha ha, sweet, okay. So there it is, it made an impression on the solder. And guess what? My stamp is perfectly fine. Funny thing about these red rubber stamps is they're, they really hold up to that heat well. Okay, so here is where I start diverting a little bit from what was in my kit and start adding some of my own elements to this. And I have some birch branches here. You could use any kind that you wanted. And I have drilled a couple of holes in both directions just to accommodate this wire that was in my little bundle. And what I've done is I've cut off about four feet of it, maybe four and a half feet, and I folded it over four times, twisted it together so that I have kind of a thicker bulking of it. So what I'm gonna do there is kind of shape this into an oval, a spoon shape. I'm gonna make spoons. So then I'm gonna take in my wire are gonna be my two cut ends. And I'm gonna take one of those cut ends, put it through this top hole, till I get that spoon part where I want it. 
I'm just gonna wrap this around. I'm also not worried about the end of this wire being tucked in too much. That's then gonna get covered. Just wanna make sure it's not really sharp poking out. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other wire, the other end of the wire in the other hole. And then I'm gonna wrap this stuff and I wanna hide my ends, my folds or my ends up in here for now. Wrap this one the other way. And most of this stuff's gonna get covered up. Most of all this wrapping is gonna get covered up. But I do wanna add some wrapping to cover these holes more that won't get covered up. And I'm gonna just wrap, 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 just because I like what it looks like. Probably about, oh, an inch or so down won't show. So I wanna make sure that I have some here that will show just because I want that to show up. It's gonna be part of the texture of the piece. Okay, so there, I have that done. And now I'm gonna bind this all up in another cool medium. So this is another medium I'm adding. This is plaster gauze. It's something that I use quite often and I really love it a lot. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, and I like to work over my water container, is I'm gonna dip this and start draping it over this wire. So some of this wire is gonna get covered up. And it doesn't really stick to the wire, but it sticks to itself. So at this point I'm just, you know, kind of wrapping it and then squeezing it to itself. Scrunching and also trying to remember that I want a scoop so I kind of push down on it when I'm pressing it. And the first few pieces are the most awkward because they don't really take on a nice equal sh or even shape and then they also don't really stick to itself very well. So I usually start getting, you know, start going and get a few pieces on there. And then sometimes if, it, if I've got so many pieces on there that it's really like soggy and sloppy, then sometimes I'll just stop and let it harden up for a few minutes. This spot right here where the where the wood was cut and then the wire came away at an angle, I wanna bulk that up and really press a bunch of gauze in there so it's really um, strong and sturdy because that's gonna be the weakest point on this spoon when I get it made is that joint between the wood and the wire. So I'm like really squeezing it in there, just packing some of these smaller pieces in there. The tighter I pack them, the more they'll help stabilize this connection. So once I have that really tightly packed, then I'm gonna take a piece and wrap around that whole cluster of pieces. All right, so I let that joint harden and I've added some more plaster. I wanna make sure that it's fairly even all the way around the edge and smoothed out. Any rough texture that you have if you don't smooth it out while it's wet, then it'll dry with that texture. And I wanna cut myself a thin, kind of a thinner strip. And I wanna do kind of a more random wrapping in through here. So I'm gonna secure that. And then I'm gonna kind of twist and pull so it turns more like a rope. I'm just kind of tuck that here and there, making sure that I end it on gauze. It won't stick just to the wire, but it'll stick to itself. So if I can wrap it tight and then end that piece on another piece of gauze, it'll be secure. All right, so you can see I have been experimenting with a stencil and the paint. And what I've decided to do here is create, this is just some tissue paper. And I am going to do a gel medium resist on this tissue paper. And then once that dries, I am going to apply it to the spoon. And mostly I'm going for some of these edges of the stencil. I'm not necessarily going for the exact image. Okay, so you can't really see the gel medium transfer, or excuse me, the gel medium resist, but it's there. And what I wanna do, I don't care about this rip, it's just all gonna work itself out. But what I'm gonna do before I glue it onto the um, spoon is I'm gonna take some of this paint. I'm gonna put, lay, lay some down on a plate. And I'm gonna create a wash and color wash this whole area of the tissue, adding a lot of water. 
and that gel medium is going to respond differently yeah you can see that all that white is where the gel medium is and you can see it's uneven it's just a lot of kind of yummy texture and cool edges and stuff so I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna gel medium this to the back of my spoon so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat the back of my spoon here with a pretty good layer of gel medium and then I'm just gonna kind of pick a spot figure out where I want to lay it Okay, because I have this hole now and this tear, I want to kind of use those. And I like the texture of this little section. So I'm pressing this all against the spoon. I'm going to start tearing the excess off carefully just so it's out of my way. I'm not fighting it. And the reason I didn't just stencil right on the plaster is because it's too textury. The stencil would have been even worse than it is on the paper as far as um, recognizability and once that dries then we'll move on to the next step so what I'm going to do now I have some clear and caustic medium hot here and I am just going to start painting this with the encaustic medium including some of these places where the gauze overlaps the wire I'm just going to kind of let it seep down in there and I'm at this point I'm not worry too much about how smooth it is. I'm going to smooth it out with a heat gun. I want just a thin layer. I don't want it super thick on the back. All right, so our wax is nice and cool. I have a, a really heavy needle here, but you could use an awl or some other sort of sharp thing. And I'm just going to start scratching some marks into this and in the places where the wax is thin it's going to pretty much instantly go to the plaster but in the places where it's thick you'll get a nice deep line but the nice thing is you don't have to have a really really deep line to still get a nice incision here okay so let's see if you can see that i've got some sort of kind of scallopy lines in there and I'm going to take that blue paint from my pen and I'm going to put those in that line. But before I put anything on there, I want to have a couple of wet wipes handy and a dry paper towel. So I did not realize that my camera died in the middle of my last little session of recording. So I'm just going to tell you what I've done that I thought was being recorded. <laughs> so all those little incisions that I made, I took that some of that paint straight out of that paint pen and I just really like pressed it in there with a brush. And you can see I've done it everywhere. I've gone all over this thing with this. And then I come back with a wipe or paper towel, whichever wipes off the amount I want wiped off and I pull back as much of that paint as I want. And according to um, traditional encaustic rules, putting acrylic paint over wax is a no-no. But in this situation where it's just settling down in the low spots and just the pigment is kind of staining the wax, it, it works great. This is uh, how I do most of my paintings when I'm using doing two-dimensional paintings, flat paintings on surfaces as I put wax and then acrylic over the top of them. So I then added um, some burnt umber up here and I'm just duplicating what I already did just so you can see how I did it. I just squirt some on my finger and I really like to rub it in there so that any texture of wax or plaster that's still poking through, you can see some scratch marks I made. Um, they really get that paint in there and before it has a chance to dry is when I want to start wiping it off you don't want to leave it on there to dry because depending on your color the pigment of the paint can really stain and you don't have to use umber I just like umber because it kind of lends itself well to all the 
texture really brings it out. Sometimes I use just white. Here I scratch some more and put white on the back. So you can just keep going along and making whatever marks you like in the wax. That wax part is all done. You can see here, here's where the wax was. And then here's where it wasn't. And so it took that paint much more where it wasn't. So I, I love these kinds of edges that you get. Last thing we're going to do is add that cool metal piece that we made earlier. All right. So there it is. I had added a little bit of a blackening patina to... Uh, to that metal piece after I soldered it and then sanded it back. So that's why the do life part shows up a little bit darker. And I think it turned out pretty cool.